Actually, I grew up with my father slowly going blind from low tension glaucoma, and he wasn't getting the treatment that he was supposed to have. I watched my father every time going for a visit, and they tell him, yeah, the visual field is a little worse, and here's the Timolol, and we'll see you next year. And that's how he lost most of his vision. Uh, eventually, he ended up with just central islands. I brought him to the U.S., and we actually did some surgeries on him. Eventually, he passed away. He was age of 92, but he still had his central vision. So I think we felt that it was a victory for us. But that brought me not only to ophthalmology, but to med school. Right now, I'm practicing in Albany, New York. Uh, before that, I was uh, practicing in uh, Michigan. Uh, in fact, I was the first uh, physician or surgeon uh, performing trabectomes in the state of Michigan. So I've been performing that for about five years or so. I think actually this procedure is deceivingly simple. You look at this, you look at the video, instructional videos, it kind of feels very easy, very quick, so you do it and you don't get the best results. And I was surprised that after doing maybe 30, 40 trabectomes, I kind of sat back and I said, finally, I think I get it. Even though it seems simple, there is a learning curve that we don't maybe realize there is. and. It just takes more experience because only with time are you going to really feel what you're doing. It's not only uh, visual, but it's also tactile. You actually begin to feel what you're doing. When is the angle of the needle of the trabectome is not just right? Uh, when does it not sit well with the uh, Schlems canal? Uh, how to lift the anterior, the TM itself, uh, forward towards you? And before you do the cutting, how well you can obliterate that internal wall so there are so many factors that it, even when we are uh, experienced surgeons, it takes a while to really get it. So I would certainly not claim or feel, hey, it just doesn't work. I would do more and learn to do it better and you would be surprised. Again, this is a very effective treatment that can help me control their glaucoma better. Now I actually started using it in even advanced glaucoma. I do use it in people where I know they actually do need the high risk procedures, but I just can't do it. For example, if the patient is too old, too frail, if I feel that the patient doesn't have enough family or community support to handle the very intense post-operative care for higher risk procedures, I've been looking at them a year, a year and a half, two years after surgery, and to my amazement, I find them around the pressure of nine, 10, with maybe one medication twice a day, and I really am happy I did not progress to trabeclectomy and tube shunts. Of course, this is a minority. Uh, we know that we need to do the higher risk procedures of those advanced cases, but in the subgroup of those patients, it can be very helpful. I think we all learn to expect something in, the, in terms of uh, pressure control, something in the mid-teens range but I have the whole range from where it just doesn't work and we know it can happen to a very impressive range of about uh, even single digits of nine, maybe 10 pressure, maybe one or two medications and stable over time. Other people have published uh, what happens a year or two years or, or more after the trabectum. We keep collecting that data and hopefully we can um, continue to present more and more of that data. But what was missing uh, for me was what happens in the short term. Uh, for example, if you have a patient who has a significant cataract, you're about to have surgery, you look at the nerve, you know this patient's nerves already, uh, they seem to be very vulnerable, they may or may not have some questionable visual field defects. As glaucoma surgeons, we all face those patients every single day, and we know that acute pressure elevation can occur after cataract surgery, and we know that it can cause damage, to, especially to nerves that are vulnerable. So the question is, how can we uh, prevent those spikes in pressure? So what we did is followed patients closely, whether they had just cataract alone versus cataract with trabectome, and we checked the pressures uh, that evening after the surgery, a few hours after. Uh, we checked the pressures, of course, the following morning. And of course, we have data six weeks out. Even us, we were surprised as to how the trabectome is efficient in curbing those spikes. There's no question that that procedure has changed my practice. Um, the way I deal with uh, early to mid glaucoma patients, um, I probably am doing much less trabeculectomies, high risk patients, uh, surgeries, I mean. Uh, on the other hand, I have an answer for those patients where, to whom we did not have any answer before. 
and so I'm doing more glaucoma procedures because I'm doing more trabectomes, I'm probably doing less of the higher risk procedures and I can still control the glaucoma in many patients.